starting with uh, what in our book is called section 8. Um, the first prep skill is evaluating powers of 10. And um, we're talking about, when they talk about a power of 10, they're talking about um, 10 for a base and then um, a integer for a power. So for instance, in this case, 10 to the seventh. What does that mean? Well, 10 to the seventh gets us 10 million. If you look at the power in this case and the number of zeros, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. Or if you think of the decimal as being here and you count until you get to uh, behind the one, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, spots to the left of that decimal. Um, so let's look at a pattern that develops here. Um, if we think of what what 10 to the first is, we know 10 to the first just means um, 10. Um, if we have 10 squared, that would mean 10 times 10, which is 100. So we have a power of 2 and we have two zeros, or we've moved the decimal spot from the end to where the 1 is would be two decimals to the left. 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10. So that's 1,000, or from uh, behind the 1 to the end here is three spots, and so on. Um, and then we had you know, 10 to the fourth, and we had 10 to the seventh was what we had here, and we said that was one with the decimal would need to be moved from the one seven places to get to the end of this digit. So what what is 10 to the zero or 10 to the negative one? If we keep following this pattern. Math is all about patterns. And um, if we have a pattern that's developing, it's got to continue to follow. So every time that we, we lower this number, we lose a zero or the decimal gets shifted to the left by one. So 100, and then if we drop the integer down by 1, we get 10. If we drop the integer down by 1 again, we actually get 1. So 10 to the 0 is actually 1. Um, 10 to the negative 1 is actually 0.1, or 1 tenth. 10 to the negative 2 is 0 0.001. So now what, what, we're ta what we're saying here is that in order to, sorry, I added an extra zero here, not 001.01. So if we count from where the decimal spot is, to get behind the one, in this case, we have to move one decimal spot. From here, we'd have to move two decimal spots, and so on. So anything that's a zero or bigger, you're going to get one with that many zeros after it. So here we have just one with no zeros after it. Here we have one with one zero after it, because it's a power one. Here we have um, one with two zeros after it, power two. But if you go the other way, you move the decimal to the left of the one. So here we've moved it left um, of the one by one. Here we've moved it left of the one by two, and so on. So this follows our pattern. Then 10 to the negative 4 should be 0. 0 0.0001 because if we want to move this decimal to behind the one, it would take us one, two, three, four decimal places to do that. So now let's look at um, if we have other numbers in our base besides 10. So in this case, uh, 5 to the third would be 5 times 5 times 5. 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 12, we could write as 12 to the fifth because it's a 12, or five factors of 12. If we have a negative number up here, um, kind of like we had before, we know already that, say, for instance, 3 squared is 3 times 3. We know that 3 to the first would be 3. And since we're reducing the number of factors of 3, 3 to the 0, um, this is 9. If we divide by 3, we get 3. If we divide by 3 again, we get 1, actually. 
and then 3 to the negative 1 is actually 1 over 3. So we have 9, 3, 1, 1 third. 3 to the negative 2 would be 1 ninth because it's 1 over 3 times 3. 3 to the negative 3 is 1 over 3 times 3 times 3. And then 3 to the negative 4 would be 1 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So um, that's what happens when you have these negative powers. It's that many of the factors, but they're on the bottom instead of on the top. So this would actually be um, 1 over uh, 81 if we wrote it as a fraction. Now if we're going to multiply two um, numbers or two uh, exponent, two expressions that have exponents in them but have the same base, I'm going to do this with a smaller example. So for instance, we had 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4th. We know 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2. And then we know 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Oh, that got messed up a little bit. Let me fix that. Kind of had a little glitch there. Times 2. Then in the end here, we have two, or we have seven factors of two, so this would be two to the seventh. So what's happened in essence is we've ended up adding these exponents because we have this many factors of two, then we have you know three factors of two, then four factors of two, so we end up with seven factors of two. So in this case, three factors of twelve and six factors of twelve would give us nine factors of twelve if multiplied together. So the rule is that we just take whatever the base is. So b to the a, uh, let me use a different letter than b. Uh, let's use uh, an n. So if we have n to the a times n to the b, then that's going to equal n to the a plus b. Whatever that base is, if it's the same, we could just rewrite it and add those powers for the top. And then in converse, if you can do that when you multiply, you add those powers, that when you divide, you should be able to subtract those powers, and that's what happens here. So 7 to the 8th divided by 7 squared, we get 7 to the 6th. If you write that out, it's kind of a battle of canceling here. So let's put two, three, eight factors of 7, and then 2 factors of 7. And if we cancel one on top with one on the bottom, because you could do that when you have like factors, then we get... 7 to the 6th. And that works no matter what. So if you're dividing, um, no matter what the base is. So if you're dividing two um, expressions that have exponents, as long as they have the same base, then we can subtract those exponents. So now let's look at the uh, prep skills questions. So 10 to the 5th uh, is simply 1 with the decimal spot moved 5 right, or 5 zeros after the 1, so 100,000. 10 to the negative 3, we know that's going to move it, and it's going to be a small number. It's going to be a number that's smaller than 0. So we're going to have um, our 1 on the end, and then we're going to move the decimal spot to the left by that much. So 1 here. If I think of the decimal as being here, I'm going to move it one, two, three spots to the left, and I end up with 0 0.001. This, um, in exponent form, I don't have to multiply it out, I just have to write it in exponent form. Our base would be 8, and our power would be 7. In this case, 1 over 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 1 over 10 to the 5th, and we said when that is on the bottom like that, I could rewrite that as 10 to the negative 5. When we multiply, we determined that we could add the exponents, so 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 12th would be the same as 10 to the 17th, and 8 to the negative 3 times 8 squared, if I add those, I end up with 8 to the negative 1. Or I could think of it as 1 over 8 to the 
first. But it says write the answer with a single exponent, so we'll do it by taking negative 3 plus 2 gives us negative 1. And then when we're dividing, we can take the top and subtract the bottom. So this one would be 5 to the 4th. And this one would be 10 to the 4 minus 11, which is 10 to the negative 7 which you could write it like that, or you could write it as 1 over 10 to the 7th. Same thing here. I could write it eight, 1 over 8 to the 1st, or just 1 8th. But since it said a single exponent, I left it like this. So this could be 10 to the negative 7, or 1 over 10 to the 7. They're equivalent. 3. In question one, we're just asked to estimate how many times further away is Pluto if Earth is about 2.57 times 10 to the seventh miles from Venus and about 4.67 times 10 to the ninth miles from Pluto. Well, this is just a rough estimate, so looking at this, 4.67 is a little less than twice as big as 2.57, so that part is about double. But then looking at the exponent on the tens, this larger distance is 10 to the second larger than the other one, 10 to the ninth versus 10 to the seventh. And so 2 times 10 squared is about 200 times as far. In questions 2 and 3, we're writing the given number in scientific notation. So in question 2, the number of people in the United States in November 2015 was 322,146,000. Well, to write that in scientific notation, I need to rewrite it with the first digit in the whole number, and then a decimal point, and then the rest of the numbers. But when I get to a point where the rest of them are all zeros, I can stop. So 3.22146. And then I'm going to multiply by 10 to an exponent. And I need to count, now that I have that decimal point after the 3, how many times would I have to move it to the right to return it to the actual number? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this will be 10 to the 8th. In number three, the distance in miles from Earth to the moon, 238,900. So again, I'll write two, the very first digit in the number, point, 389, and I can stop when all the rest are zeros, times 10 to the, well, with that decimal point right after the two, I would have to move that decimal point one, two, three, four, five to return it back to the regular number. So 2.389 times 10 to the fifth. In 4 and 5, we're writing very small numbers in scientific notation. So in number 4, a typical flu virus measures between these two numbers of meters in length. So we're going to write both of those in scientific notation. Well, looking at the first one, 0 0.000008. Just like with large numbers in scientific notation, you find the first digit that is not 0, in this case 8, and write it with a decimal point after it. But in this case, there are no digits after that, so we really don't need that decimal point. So it'll just be 8 times 10. This time, we need to look at, if I put that decimal point after the 8, how many times do I have to move it to the left to get it back where it was? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And because I would have to move it to the left, it's 10 to the negative 8th. So 8 times 10 to the negative 8. And then the larger amount, 0 0.00000012 meters, We'd again go to the very first digit that's not 0, which is the 1, write 1 and then a decimal point and then all the rest of the digits, 1.2 times 10. And then again, imagine if you put the decimal point after the 1, how many times would you have to move it to the left to get it back where it was? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this will be 1.2 times 10 to the negative 7th. 
In 5, E. coli is a common bacterium that can cause intestinal issues. A typical specimen is about 0.000007 meters long. Writing that in scientific notation then, we would have 7 point, but there's nothing after that, so you don't really need the decimal point. So 7 times 10 to the what? Well, if we put that decimal point after the 7, we would have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places to the left to get it back to where it started. So 7 times 10 to the negative 6th. And then in 6, based on the size of the exponent in those scientific notations, which is bigger, a small flu virus or a typical E. coli sample? Well, the small flu virus would be the 8 times 10 to the negative 8th, and then the E. coli is 7 times 10 to the negative 6. Those are both in meters. So in this case, the 8 to the 7 is almost the same. We're really just focused on the exponents on the 10. To get from 10 to the negative 8th to 10 to the negative 6th, that exponent would need 2 added to it. So we're talking about 10 to the 2nd, which is about 100 times bigger. In 7, we're supposed to take these numbers that are in scientific notation and write them in decimal notation, which means write them as regular numbers. So in part A, the number of red blood cells per microliter of blood in an average healthy man, 5.4 times 10 to the 6th. So I'm going to write down the 5.4, and times 10 to the 6th means that I need to move that decimal point 6 places to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's where the new decimal point goes, and I need to fill all of those extra slots in with zeros, and then I need to rewrite the number with the decimal where it belongs. So I'll have a 5 and a 4, and then 5 zeros. I don't really need the decimal point at the end since there's nothing after it, and then I can go back and put commas where you would usually see them. In B, the mass of an average human ovum, 3.6 times 10 to the negative ninth kilograms. So again, I'm going to start by writing 3.6, and I'm going to move the decimal point. Times 10 to the negative ninth means that I'm going to move that decimal point nine places to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the new location of the decimal point, and then I'll fill that in with zeros. And then I'll rewrite that number with the decimal point where it should be. So I'll go ahead and put a zero before it, point. It looks like we have eight zeros and then three six. In 8 through 10, we're going to summarize what we know. So in 8, when a number written in scientific notation has a positive exponent on the 10, what can we say for sure about the number? Well, that means that that's a larger number. The smallest it could be would be 10 to the first, so it's at least 10, and it could be larger than 10. In 9, if a number between 0 and 1 is written in scientific notation, so that means we're dealing with a decimal with nothing to the left of the decimal point, what can we say about the exponent on the 10? Well, those are the cases where we're dealing with negative exponents. And then in 10, if a number in scientific notation has a negative exponent on the 10 then, to convert it to decimal form, we would move the decimal place left because we know that that number is less than 1. And in 11, we're looking at how numbers in scientific notation appear on a graphing calculator. So in this case, the result, 7.44 capital E3, what that means is scientific notation 7.44 times 10 to the third. And then it asks us to also write that in decimal notation or as a regular number. So to write that as a regular number, we would write 7.44 and then times 10 to the third means I'm going to move that decimal point one, two, three places to the right, which gives me the number 7,440. Here we're looking at the national debt over time written in scientific notation, and we're supposed to write how it would be read out loud. Note that they're using scientific notation here as it would appear in a spreadsheet with the capital E and the plus sign. 
So they've given us the first one as an example, but what you want to think about is that 10 to the 9th is a billion and 10 to the 12th is a trillion. So in 1930, 1.60 times 10 to the 10th, that's bigger than a billion. It's actually 10 times bigger. So that actually means that you need to move the decimal point one to the right if you want to say it in billions. Another way of thinking about that is this says that you need to move the decimal point 10 places to the right. If I move it one place to the right, then now it only has nine more places to go, which makes it a 10 to the ninth. So this could also be written as 16 times 10 to the ninth, which would make it 16 billion. With that in mind, the value in 1940 would be 51 billion. Now in 1950, the exponent on the 10 moves up to 11. It would need to go all the way up to 12 to be a trillion, so we're not there yet. It just means that we're going to have to move that decimal point two places to the right to get it to be 10 to the ninth. 257, that means I've moved it two of the 11 places. There's nine left, so 257 times 10 to the ninth, which makes that $257 billion. And following that pattern in 1960, it would be $286 billion. And in 1970, it would be $371 billion. And they already have 1980 filled in, $908 billion. Then in 1990, the exponent is a 12. So that is 3.233 times 10 to the 12th. That's already in trillions. So it would be $3.233 trillion which means in 2000 it would be 5.674 trillion dollars. In 2010 the exponent increases to 13 so we would need to move the decimal point one to the right which makes it 13.562 times 10 to the 12th or 13.562 trillion dollars. And then similarly 2015 would be 18.151 trillion dollars. Here we're supposed to use the national debts that we were given in the last problem and then this extra information. The population of the United States in 1930 and then the population in 2015. And we're supposed to use those to figure out if the national debt were to be paid off by dividing the total amount evenly among all citizens, how much would each person owe? So first, in 1930. Well, what was the national debt in 1930? Let's go look at that. In 1930, it was 1.60 times 10 to the 10th. So we have 1.60 times 10 to the tenth dollars and there were roughly 1.23 times 10 to the eighth people in the United States. So we're going to divide that by 1.23 times 10 to the eighth. And when you enter this in your calculator, if you use the times notation, do be very careful that you have parentheses around both of your values. If you want to, you can use the scientific notation button on your calculator, which would put a capital E in there instead. You'd have 1.60E10 divided by 1.23E8. Both of these should give you the same result of about $130 per person. So then in 2015, what was the national debt then? It was 1.8151 times 10 to the 13th. And the population that year was 3.2 times 10 to the 8th. So we'll divide by that. If we entered that using the scientific notation button, we'd have 1.8151E13 divided by 3.2E8. Either way, that would come out to about $56,722 per person. So for the group portion in this lesson, um, it actually requires us to bring in a microwave to the class and 
a bar of chocolate and we're not going to do that so we're not going to do um, one through eight and so the video is not going to pick up with the group portion of the lesson um, number nine we're going to wrap up this lesson with a couple of questions about the main ideas. So in number nine, if you think about a number in scientific notation with a negative exponent on the 10, what happens when you move the decimal point the number of places to the left that you need to and how does that relate to the number of zeros? So just with an example, let's say you have a number like 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Well, when you take that 3.2 and move the decimal point four places to the left, the first move moves around the first digit here. And then two, three, four, the rest of those add zeros to the front of the number. And so the rule that we could use based on that example is that whatever that exponent was, ignoring the negative, you're going to have one less than that for zeros on the front of it. So looking at our example with the negative 4 on the exponent, ignoring the negative, when we move the decimal point 4 to the left, we ended up with three zeros after the decimal point, and then our digits. And then in 10, describe a couple of quantities that would be efficiently written in scientific notation. You can come up with a lot more. I'll give two examples. One for large numbers in scientific notation would be distances between planets. And then an example of very, very small numbers that would have too many zeros between the decimal point and an actual numerical digit would be something like the size of a cell. In question one, in 2014, there were 148.6 million personal federal tax returns filed, and the average amount per filer paid was 9,118. So we're going to write each of these numbers in scientific notation. We have to be careful with the first one, 148.6 million. Now a million is 10 to the sixth, but if we start that out by writing 148.6 times 10 to the sixth, that is 148.6 million, however, it is not in scientific notation. To be in scientific notation, the decimal point has to be after the first digit. So we need that to be 1.486. How does that change our exponent? Well, by moving the decimal two more places to the left, I need to tell someone that they then need to move it two more places back to the right to compensate and get back to the regular number. So I would need to tell them that they're now going to need to move it eight places to the right. So I would make that 1.486 times 10 to the eighth. Now the other number, 9,118, is a little bit easier because we already have the regular number. We can just write it from scratch. So that would be 9.118 times 10 to the, well I'm going to need to move it 1, 2, 3 to get back to the original number. So 9.118 times 10 to the third. And number two, so how much money did the government take in then? Well, they took in 1.486 times 10 to the eighth tax returns, each one paying 9.118 times 10 to the third. So we need to multiply those two values together. 1.486 times 10 to the eighth times 9.118 times 10 to the third and that's going to come out to about 1.35 times 10 to the 12th. From our chart earlier in the lesson, we know that 10 to the 12th is a trillion. So the way that would be pronounced is 1.35 trillion dollars. In question three, an American dollar bill is 4.3 times 10 to the negative third inches thick. If all the tax revenue from question two was paid in dollar bills, how many inches high would a stack be? So we know from question two that the tax revenue was $1.35 trillion, or 1.35 times 10 to the 12th. 
And so if we're going to have that many dollar bills and each one is 4.3 times 10 to the negative third inches thick, we need to multiply those together. And they say to write the answer in decimal notation, not scientific notation. So that comes out to about 5,805,000,000 inches. In number four then, to convert a number of inches into miles, you divide it by 12 times 5,280. So let's do that for our tax proceeds. So we're going to take our 5,805,000,000 inches and we're going to divide it by 12 times 5,280. And be sure when you're putting that in your calculator to put parentheses around the 12 times 5,280. That's going to come out to about 91,619 miles. And then in number five, the Earth is 9.3 times 10 to the seventh miles from the sun. So what percentage of the weight of the sun would our stack of dollar bills be? So we'll take our 91,619 miles and divide it by 9.3 times 10 to the seventh miles. Be sure in your calculator to either use the scientific notation button or put parentheses around the bottom there. And when you divide that out, you get about 9.85 times 10 to the negative fourth. That's not the percentage though. You still need to move the decimal point two places to the right to get the percentage. What does that mean when we have numbers in scientific notation? Well, if I move the decimal point two places to the right, then that means I'm making that number larger. That means I would have less of a negative exponent. So changing that to a percentage, I would have 9.85 times 10 to the negative second percent. And then they also want us to write that in decimal notation, which would be 0.0985% after I take that decimal point and move it two to the left. In question six, the total amount of money taken in by the federal government from all sources in 2014 was about $3.02 trillion. What percentage of this revenue came from personal income taxes? Well, remember that from question two, we found out that the amount coming in from personal income taxes was 1.35 trillion. So 1.35 times 10 to the 12th. We're going to divide that by the total of all revenue, 3.02 trillion, or 3.02 times 10 to the 12th, to get the percentage. And that comes out to about 0.447, or 44.7 percent. In seven, among those earning $10 million or more, the average amount of taxes paid was 7.88 times 10 to the sixth dollars. What percentage is that of the government's revenue? So we'll take 7.88 times 10 to the sixth, and we'll divide that by 3.02 trillion, or 3.02 times 10 to the twelfth, and that's going to give us about 2.6 times 10 to the negative sixth. But if I want to make that a percentage, I need to move the decimal two places to the right or change that to 2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth percent. And then it also wants that in decimal notation. In decimal notation, we would move the decimal then on that percentage four places to the left, which would make it 0.00026%. In eight, how did the amount of money taken in by the government in 2014 compare to the amount spent? Well, the amount taken in was 3.02 trillion, so 3.02 times 10 to the 12th. And if we subtract the amount spent, 3.51 times 10 to the 12th, what we get is negative 4.9 times 10 to the 11th dollars. Now that negative amount means that we spent more than we took in, which contributes to the national debt.